Good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone that came out this evening. This evening, for a little bit, I'd like to talk about... Um, well, first of all, I'd like to take a little bit of imagination trip. So, I'd like with you, for y'all to imagine with me that y'all were blindfolded, and you're taken somewhere, and everybody's different, so choose where you want to be taken, you know, the place that's going to confuse you the most, whether it's the middle of a big city, out in the middle of the desert, wherever, you know, choose a place. And you imagine that you were blindfolded, taken there, dropped off, and after you didn't hear no noise, you could take off the blindfold, and you're supposed to figure out where you're at, you know. And a lot of us say, well, that's pretty easy, you know, we're going to pick a big city, we're going to, you know, we'll see some signs, it'll be Chicago, you know, or whatever. And, but, imagine there was no signs, none of the stores were marked, you didn't have Google for sure, and you were just out in the middle of nowhere, you know. Um, there's no street signs, no town signs, um, no stores, yeah, nothing was labeled. And everybody you met didn't know where anything was either, you know, they couldn't point you, say this is north, or anything even simple. Now we got a little mental picture, hopefully. Um, now my question is, is life like that? Is that how life is? Or do some people have signs that they go by, and some people have road signs, some people don't? Now, I am going to need help tonight, going to need your interaction. Good answer. Anybody else have an opinion? Some signs are incorrect. Yeah. They're labeled wrong. Yeah. So how do you know if it's an incorrect sign or if it's a correct sign? You have to test it by the truth. Yeah. Good answer. I like your point. Yeah, I'd like to, tonight I'd like to think a little bit about, um, the title is Seeking a Sign. And, you know, we go through life and... I don't know if you are this way, but sometimes when you come up against something hard, um, you're like, maybe you're like, Lord, give me a sign. And I was doing some thinking about this. I was driving down the road, and I was like, so we say, like, we're going to seek a sign, or maybe we ask the Lord for a sign. But then I was like, you know, there's a lot of people saying, like, we can't go by seeking a sign. You know, there's those people that say, there's not such a thing. The Lord doesn't give a sign. Other people say, yes, the Lord speaks by signs. So I'd like to... Let's just have a good discussion tonight and dig a little bit into the Bible, see what God says about seeking signs. Um, first of all, to get started, um, get our minds rolling, as I was studying, I came across a story about a man and his wife uh, moved into a little house. And I came across this story, I don't know the origin of the story. But it kind of gives a pretty good view of what I was thinking about whenever I thought about this, um, seeking a sign. I'm going to read this story. Years ago, my wife and I rented a house out in the country in Manassas, Virginia. It was our first house together. We lived on a commuter road, which means that there was heavy traffic in the morning as folks drove to work, and heavy traffic in the evening as folks went home from work. I should insert here, um, this is kind of a sad story, but it turns out very beautiful. One day shortly after we moved in, as I was watching all the cars drive by our house, I felt a strong conviction to put a sign out by the road that said something about God. Then I thought, that's crazy. I prayed about it for a couple days and said, Lord, are you wanting me to put a sign out by the road about you? I told the Lord, I tell you what, if you want me to put a sign out by the road about you, I need you to provide a sheet of plywood and the paint. Later that week, as I was mowing the tall grass in my new backyard, I heard a thump as the mower went over the grass. 
I backed up to see what was the sound, what made the sound, and it was half a sheet of plywood. I thought, well that's funny, all I need now is some paint. I poked up the half sheet of plywood and decided to put it in the unfinished basement of our new rental home. This would be the first time I went to the basement. As I began to walk down the stairs with the plywood, I noticed several shelves of paint. What? Well, Lord, in just a few short days, you provided the wood and the paint. What message do you want me to write? The only message that kept coming to mind was simple. The message was, Jesus loves you. I painted it that night, put it out by our mailbox late on a Sunday night. As I stood back to read it, I noticed I had painted the letters <coughs> too small to read if the cars went flying by. Lord, the only way people are going to be able to read this sign is if they are driving very slowly. The next morning I woke up <coughs> and there were about six inches of snow on the ground. A surprise snowstorm hit our area. Cars were driving very slowly past our house and more importantly past the sign. I could not believe it. There was no snow in the forecast. I decided every Saturday night, every Sunday night, I would repaint the, the white the sign white and put a new message on it. About six months after the church sign went out, after the first sign went out, sorry, I received a note on my car windshield in my church's parking lot one Sunday after church. Our church was about 30 to 40 minutes away from our house. The note was from a man who attended our church. He wrote about how six months ago his world was turned upside down. His wife left him and he lost his job all in the same week. He felt depressed and worthless. He decided he was going to end it all and take his life. As he, went, as he left his house one morning, he told God that he did not want to live anymore, and he blamed God for all his trouble. He did not believe God loved him. He prayed and said, God, if you are real and if you love me and don't want to take my life, please give me a sign. As he turned down my road, moments later he saw a sign that read, Jesus loves you. He burst into tears. He prayed for a sign. He literally got a sign. He decided because of that sign, he was not going to take his life. As he was going through the church directory one night, he saw a, church, a couple from church lived near him. When he saw the address, he realized that was the address of the house where he saw the sign. As I led the, read the letter, I began to weep. I could not believe that our little sign was used in such a powerful way. Have you been asking God for a sign of His love for you? Now, that's a pretty amazing story. Um, and I know some people would maybe criticize it, but was that coincidence? This guy, all this chain of, like, was that just a chain of events that just fell together and this happened? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Chain of events, all right. Directed by God. So, do we still ask for signs today, or is that something in the past, or something certain religions do, or? That is a good thought. I didn't actually uh, come up with this tonight as far as something like a, a whack job or anything like that. Like what I'm saying is <laughs> I'm viewing it not like extremist, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Um, maybe I should read. I um, Here's a definition I came up with. An object, quality, or event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. Now, I don't know if that sounds confusing or not, but pretty much, in other words, like, if something happens in your life, um, obviously it's there by divine nature, whatever it might be, you know. I think Roger could tell us that if we don't put oil in our car, 
we're going to have engine failure, you know? That's a sure sign of engine failure. I'm not sure that you can answer the question, should we ask for a sign in just a simple statement, yes or no? Um, it depends on the motive behind your asking. If you have clear command from God and you're seeking a sign to try to avoid that command, I think that's wrong. Sometimes people need a confirmation. I guess my mind was, um, I like that thought, my mind was kind of going down the line of where there's little things happen every day we don't really call signs, if you know what I mean. Like, um, well, take for example, um, way back at the flood, God put the rainbow in the sky as a sign. But how many? T when was the last time we looked at that and viewed that as a sign? We just like it's kind of little things we take for granted, you know, every day. And I guess that's where my mind was going a little bit. Um, Do any of you have times in the Bible that you could think of when people maybe sought a sign or a sign was answered or anything like that? Gideon. He asked for a sign twice. Did he get his sign? Was it for his benefit? No, he had to go do something he didn't want to. <laughs> Is that the reason that he asked a couple times? I guess in problem. That's a good one. Maybe uh, Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes was a sign. This was the job. And Ahaz was told to ask for a sign and he refused. You say Ahaz? King Ahaz. Those are good ones. <clears throat> I don't know if you would consider Daniel and his three friends, but the sign was given when they were more healthy than the other captives. So what was the important part of that one, that vegetables are good for you, or was there something more there? That wasn't that what they did? They ate vegetables and the other guys ate the meat and the wine? And I guess my point is, how do we discern if we're taking the right thing from a sign? If you know what I mean, like, we can live and better our lives because of the deeper thing that maybe speared that or we can focus on the sign you know this is my sign well it would have been more than their motive they were not going to defile themselves with the king's meat uh, I'm not sure where it came in what they ate but mm -hmm. I actually had looked into that term used for what they need one time, and as best I can tell, the meeting is actually rather uncertain. So the focus was not necessarily on the specific food they ate as, as a kind of food or whatever health benefits it may or may not have had, but simply to honor their obedience to God, as in it was not the food that was potentially offered to idols or 
think that's a good answer. <clears throat> I think another one was, if I recall, Holy Asia, when he went to seek a light from Canyon from somebody else, the guy answered his prayer. You know, and water, not only watering, what was it, donkeys or I mean, uh, cattle or whatever it was, but she went the second mile. And I think Jacob was another one that saw the sign. And he had problems later on because he got two of them. But <laughs> You don't think he had two signs for that? <laughs> well, it's a law of sowing and reaping. Look what he did to his brother earlier. But you're not asking for that tonight. It's a good point, though. <clears throat> I think we need to be careful from the aspect of the sage. I don't know, take a sample. Sage of Bible. Before the prayer bailing, now you're going to pray and see if God would say it's necessary or not. Things are spelled out in the scripture. I don't think it's right to ask for silence. Mm -hmm. However, we want to know, really know the role of God. God can make it known to us by a sign. But I don't think he needs to try and reinforce his word. His word is forever silver ready. Mm -hmm. So something that's spelled out in the scripture, I don't think it's right for us to do that. However, with Gideon's situation, God told him to do something. So why was it right for him? God's a judge. I do like that point, though. That um, that was one thing that in my study and I was thinking about as well. Um, I don't think it's right if like we know right and wrong, you know, by what we read out of the Bible. There's some stuff, like you said, black and white. And I don't think that's something, you know, obviously... Um, that we say, Lord, you know, would you want us not to do this? Because this is what your word says. Um, but so now, take this a little further. Is it right, say, if we're, um, well, before me and my wife started dating, um, would it be right for me to ask, you know, for a sign? You know, if she's at this event, you know, and that happens multiple times or whatever. If you ask the Lord that because you weren't 100% convinced or whatever. Or maybe you needed a nudge, or is that right, or is that something we shouldn't be involved in? And I'm just asking questions. I don't got a gender or anything. I'm just. But how did you know, like I'm not trying to be weird here, but so like my point is this. So I, I think that's a good point that you had, but there's a lot of people walking close to God. So how do you narrow that down? I'm just going to, since you use that example, that's, I'm going to reverse that question. It's a little like, I guess what my point is, you know, you're going to choose occupation. There's a lot of good occupations out there. How do you narrow it down, you know? Well, in this case, I, I was uh, a little more encouraged by the fact that I had tried seven other times without success. 
with other young ladies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> dig into that. your... That's fine, it doesn't bother me yet. But I'm just saying, that was God's providence. Mm -hmm. Working hand in hand with my observations, my choice. Like the testimony. <laughs> I think that's a question that most young men face. And I think God leads through circumstances. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's wrong to ask for direction because to say that's not something God gives clear direction on. Mm -hmm. I think He leads through circumstances. I think it's right to ask for His direction. Aren't those little directions like indirectly signs? I guess that's where I'm thinking with signs. And maybe I'm la labeling it wrong to call those things signs, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like those little, and that's what I like. I like your point there. Um, those little directions God gives us, you know. Sometimes we don't call them signs because it's like, well, they're so minute, you know. But in a sense, they are. You know, they're one-way streets or stop signs or, you know. <clears throat> One thought I had was, does it make a difference if you're asking for a specific sign, or are you open to a, a sign? I know you ask for a specific sign, but is, is there anything in the, that makes a difference in it has to be this certain thing, or it's, are you looking to whatever? That's a really good question. Does anybody have a thought on that? It can be real touchy asking for a sign and everybody has an opinion. And there's a lot of people aren't going to really share their opinion probably, but like Will said, are you are you willing to follow through with the outcome? You know, Richard has a very good point. But at the end of the day, why are you asking for a sign? Mm -hmm. If you're asking for a specific sign, and that sign isn't given, and you bully your way on through, then you have a hardening of that. I do I feel pretty hard on you. But, you know, it's obvious where, where your question came from. It's obvious where your sign came from. Mm -hmm. It wasn't from a solicitor willing heart. So you're saying even though you asked for a sign, you still knew the out route you were going to take right. before you even. If, if you do that, then you're, you're totally asking you're under the wrong mm -hmm. uh, condition. I think you have a good point. Let me read a verse that I came across here in uh, Matthew 16.3. <clears throat> And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? <clears throat> the wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. the question, and I read those verses, does that mean now that we shouldn't ask for a sign? It says a wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign. That sounds pretty strong. What was that? I'm going to challenge you to read that verse in the context that it's being used. Right. <laughs> I think he's pretty much saying that um, y'all can look at the weather and you all have the answers for the easy things in life, but you can't actually um, see what I'm trying to tell you. Is that kind of the context? I mean, that's what I took from it whenever I read through it. But. <clears throat> Take that pretty literal. 
Yeah. And I have had conversation with some of them. You do not have for sign, period. We know everything we need to know right here. And I guess I struggle a little bit with being that dogmatic about it. Yet, there is a sense in which they have a pretty good point. Personally, I will be very slow to base significant decisions on one single sign. Mm -hmm. I think God is pretty good at direction, nudging, this is the way I want you to go. And that's right and good for us to depend on God's direction. And I have asked for signs, I'll just be honest. Mm -hmm. um, would I do it again? Not as quick. But I do ask for direction. And so then God, in a roundabout way, if you want to say it, works in signs, right? If you feel, you feel little nudges, that's what I call signs. That's circumstances. So okay, circumstances. Yeah, that's probably a better word. Sometimes it's circumstances. Sometimes it's a little more significant than, than just a circumstance. Maybe I shouldn't say just a circumstance, but sometimes there's some unusual circumstances. Then we recognize God working through that. I think if we're not careful, I think we can be pretty close to, um, um, is it called mock God, maybe? By asking, you know, if the moon would come up in the middle of the day or something weird like that. You know, I don't think that's right. Because I think we can almost, um, yeah, I'm not sure if you call it mock God or. What was that? Treat him like a magic lamp. <laughs> Supposedly the genie comes out and has to grant him a new So another aspect of this that we could think about is um, there's people have, in history have asked for signs. Maybe God answered their sign, you know? Uh, whether it's through circumstances or whatever, and whether it was choosing a career or whatever it was. So they felt pretty strongly God was leading them into this, and so they start into that career, whatever it might be, put your, whatever you want in there, and then it doesn't work out. You know what I mean? They're a year into it, and things go belly up. Was God leading in their lives, or wasn't He? I'm just asking these questions. I mean, I know the answers to these, and I think y'all do too, but I just like some discussion. Or did they, or is that a sign they forced their way into it? I think we just came through Job, so I think people. I like that answer. Better fit in us for whatever he has next for us.
Jaws never going to lead us down a dead end street. It may look like a Jaws, but he's not going to lead us down a dead end street. I like that point. So no matter how rough the going is, we take comfort that it'll lead to a beautiful destination if we're truly following him. I'd like to read um, Hebrews 2, 1 to 4 in closing. Um, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken of the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to His own will. Um, I guess the thing I'd like to leave with us tonight is, um, I think God here is saying that He has given us everything as far as signs, you know, amazing signs of His love, His mercy to us, everything we need. Um, to make it to glory if we're following him, you know. Um, and I don't think we need to seek some dramatic sign, you know, to experience God in our lives. And I guess what I'd like to leave with us tonight is, you know, the next time um, we're tempted to not feel like God is on our side or maybe we're down in the dumps, maybe we should check our relationship with him and... I think he'll have plenty of, he'll put plenty of circumstances in our lives to show his mercy and his, that he is right beside us if we choose to follow him. These time, at this time, I'll turn it back over to Kendrick. <clears throat>